Hi, welcome back to the show. Now, if you're anything like me, you're simultaneously sick of your own company, but also quite happy that you don't have to interact with other human beings. But it can get a little bit lonely. So to try and find that perfect middle ground, I've invented this very special device. It may look like a spiralizer, crudely taped to a mobile phone charging pad, but it's actually an incredibly sophisticated cloning machine. There have been a few failed experiments. Welcome to the Not So Late Show. <laughs> And the best thing is that I can create perfect replicas of myself that display one single negative emotion at all times, enabling me to be simply happy and joyful. You can pretty much create any emotion you want. Are we all gonna die? We're all gonna die! Do you have any pie? But ultimately, I've decided I only really need the most important three. So please join me in welcoming my three new co-hosts of the show, Anger, Sadness and Hunger. No, no, okay, not now. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage the host of the Not So Late Show, it's Ross Hello and welcome back to the Not So Late Show, the UK's finest and hopefully only alternative comedy chat show broadcast directly from my dining room. Big shout out to everyone who's stuck with us since episode one. We've had a lot of love and a lot of correspondence as well, in particular from Asda CEO Roger Burnley, who quite simply will not stop emailing me. But seriously, Roger, well done in everything you're doing for the local community. We've had plenty of other correspondence as well from viewers in London who have said, Ross, just what is a dining room? Well, for our fans in the capital, you might know a dining room as double bedroom number five, or alternatively, the shop downstairs. We've also had a lot of hints and tips from our viewers as well, and I particularly like this one from Dave from Tadcaster, who says if you're struggling for food at the moment, food, not now, then simply go to a large supermarket chain and shoplift it off the shelves. Due to social distancing measures, the security staff have to stay at least two feet away from you at all times. Well, without further ado, let's crack on with episode four and find out what's coming up on today's show. A horse. Keanu Reeves. Try losing yourself in a good book. I'm reading that at the moment, apart from page 15. None of it makes sense. Music is scientifically proven to help you relax. I spent all weekend learning a song on this stylophone. Let's play it together. Great, the fucking batteries have run out. Try painting or drawing to relax. That's a fucking rainbow. Get in touch with your favorite ways to relax. <laughs> okay, what? Okay, thanks. Fine. No, what no, that's just... No, it was great. What? You do it then. <laughs> okay. Do it better, you was it? Okay. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, well, we've had some fantastic, some wonderful, some magical guests on the Not So Late Show so far, but none more magical than our next guest. It is a genuine wizard, the one and only Wizard Bron Wang, everybody. Wizard Bron Wang. Bron Wang. Oh, uh, hello, hello. I am a wizard. Uh, I would have thought that uh, that a wizard would have uh, maybe a magical lair uh, or of some kind, um, but you appear to be in a, uh, a, a, a rather normal flat. My So my work... Uh, takes place in the deepest, darkest dell, in the most fearsome, frightsome forest. And I live there, well, I don't live, I pretend to live there in a pond. And I sort of loom out of the pond at brave adventurers who, who come by and I set them a challenge uh, so that they may find out if they are due to be one day the true king. I've had to furlough the pond business, and I'm just at home in Deptford. And are you a, are you a difficult flatmate, uh, Bron Wang, uh, or are you uh, are you quite considerate? I do occasionally explode things, but magical explosions, all colourful lights and <gasps> the smoke and all that, and something disappears and something else arrives. Very exciting, but it didn't it did it did ruin the fridge. Uh, now you uh, you were having to work from home as uh, as we all are. Uh, what particular challenges is that setting you uh, as a wizard? A horse say appear, which is my favourite spell. Um, I can do that, but then, you know, where do you keep it? Uh, so I tried making a cat appear, so he had some company, but uh, it turns out I, I made basically a cat-sized horse. You know what I really miss? Newts. I, I remember going into Tesco's Every Little Helps before, and uh, the newts everywhere. You could buy the newts very easily, 
And so I think there was panic buying on newts. They just thought, oh, better get some newts in. They're hard to get. That's very frustrating for someone like me, who obviously newts are a central part of my potion making. Have developed rather a penchant for uh, for salamander since the uh, since the lockdown. So, hmm. if uh, if one wanted to become a wizard, um, uh, how would you go about it? Would you recommend it? I'm running a uh, weekly seminar on how to to start doing magic. Uh, every week is five minutes, five hundred pounds uh, a month. Other than that, uh, practice. Uh, and before we uh, before we let you go, is there any chance you could just give us maybe a bit of a demonstration, a quick basic spell? Yes. Did you see that? Was that not there before? Oh look, my head's upside down. Five hundred pounds, well spent. Uh, three weeks on my course. And you'll be doing that. From the bottom of my heart, can I just say it's been an absolute pleasure to speak to you, Wizard Bron Wang, and uh, I hope that, uh, that Deptford realises how lucky it is to have you uh, in its midst. You're very, very sycophantic. Thank you. Next guest is an incredible actor. You may have seen him on Last Christmas. Or you may have seen him in the critically acclaimed catastrophe as well. We're absolutely delighted to be joined on the show by the one and only Mr. Bilal Zafar. Bilal, welcome to the show. Now, you've, uh, you've joined us on the, the show to, to teach me uh, the fundamentals of acting. Acting is pain. Metaphorically speaking, or...? No. Very painful. It's very painful. Sometimes you have to do some plays barefooted and there's stuff on the floor. I was wondering if it was possible for you to just teach us a few of those basics, those fundamentals, for people who are wanting to get into acting but don't know where to start. I'll give you my five... Key acting tips. Five key acting tips. Fantastic. What's number one? War Warm-ups. Could you go into more detail? Uh, move your face before a scene. If you can't move your face, then you're not acting. Can you, can you give us a demonstration? Maybe I could try one myself. That's big face, small face. Okay, like, is that... Almost. That is good. I've been doing it all my life. Out of interest, who taught you, Bilal? Keanu Reeves. Fantastic stuff. What's he like in person? Aggressive. What's the next step? The thing they don't teach you in drama schools or any of these places is script does not matter. Have you seen Edward Scissorhands? Uh, I have seen Edward Scissorhands, yeah, yeah. He wasn't meant to have Scissorhands. Okay, so we've got warm-ups, we've got improvising. Number three. Yes. I read in an acting book about listening being important in a production. It's not important. You don't listen. I've been in many plays where you come on and then another character tries to do their little bit and you talk over them and you just do a monologue. And, and that's a good thing? Yeah. Again, could you give us a bit of an example? Five stars. Sorry? Five stars. Sorry, you were talking five, over... Five stars. Five stars. For, for the what? Play I, the play I was in. Uh, How many tips have I done? That's three tips. I thought I'd done seven. Three tips. The... Um... Warm-ups, don't listen, and improvise. I've put don't listen to other actors as f five. So not so five of the seven tips are don't listen to actors. It's a lot of emphasis on not listening to actors. Because they're idiots, the other ones, the other actors. Is there anyone you respect in the industry at all? Johnny Depp. Yeah, because of the improvising. Very good in um, The Pirates. Thought he was English. Did you? He's not. He's um, some, somewhere else. It's acting. Yeah. So what do you want to know? Do you have any celebrity anecdotes? I was um, working on a trilogy, went into the wrong trailer, and Tim Allen was getting dressed uh, com completely naked. He said, this isn't your trailer. I said, um, all right, see ya. Did you see anything? Yeah. And was it impressive? Very good. So, before we go, what are my chances of making it uh, out there in uh, in Hollywood? You need to dye your hair blonde. Right, okay. Why, why is that? To be in um, Broadway. Broadway Hollywood. 
Okay, well, thanks ever so much for uh, for joining us. Uh, I, I really have uh, learned a hell of a lot uh, from this acting masterclass. And yeah, um, do you have anything uh, anything people should follow? Do you have anything to plug? No. Well, that's just about it from me and the gang. Someone say Marang. No, nobody did. Thanks to everyone who got in touch with the answers to last week's question, where does John Lithgow? Here's the best answer from Pete. But of course, the real answer is nowhere. Stay at home, John. <laughs> Next week's big question is, who's older, Gary Newman or Gary Oldman? Get in touch on social media at The NSL Show or email thenslshow at gmail.com. On next week's show, we'll be talking to one of those inflatable tube men you find outside of car showrooms. I feel like I've let myself down a little bit. And we'll be asking the band Devo, what's your favourite dog? <laughs> Miniature Schnauzer. Until then, stay safe and try not to go bananas.